We're all trying to squeeze a little extra performance out of our computers, especially since Moore's Law seems to be dead. One of the ways you can do it is by upgrading to a faster hard drive, because while processors have leveled out, hard drives keep getting faster and faster and faster. Recently, Justin got this new computer here, this monster origin. Technically, it's a desktop, though it looks like a laptop. We'll have a whole review on that. Um, but it has three types of drives in it, a conventional magnetic hard drive, um, a flash drive, an SSD drive, and an M.2 drive, which offer increasing performance and cost. So here's kind of what the performance looks like on like a raw, low-level measurement, just throughput, where here the bigger lines are better performance. At the top, you have the standard hard drive. In the middle, you have the SSD drive, which has become standard for a lot of computers now. And on the bottom, you have the new M.2 drives, which are these little memory chips. They look just like the memory chips in your computer, except the little connectors are on the end of it. Um, so you can see the new M2 drives dramatically faster. The SSD drives are also dramatically faster than the magnetic drive. So this is shows a huge performance increase, right? Like an order of magnitude faster. We'd really hoped to see that that performance would show up when we did application-based higher-level benchmarks, specifically around 4K video editing and photo editing in Adobe Lightroom. And we didn't really see too much of that. Um, here's the render time for a 4K video that we put together, a fairly complex 4K video that had, um, you know, some Lumetri grading and titles and things like that. And you can see the faster drives definitely decrease performance. The SSD drive was about 10% faster than our magnetic drive, and the M.2 drive was about 10% faster than the SSD. So if you're sizing up these upgrades, and I'll give you prices in a second, know that it's only going to get you like 10 or maybe 20% better performance. It's going to vary depending on your configuration, sure. So you'll see a little bit better render times. And you'll see some of that as far as actually scrubbing video, doing the actual editing. You will see a little bit better performance, but it might not even be um, this extreme of a difference. Lightroom imports, every photographer knows it's just a terrible process waiting for your pictures to import because you're all excited to look for look through them and we're always looking for ways to get to those pictures faster. We found that upgrading from a magnetic drive to an SSD made a little bit of a difference. We're talking like five to ten percent here. Um, we didn't see any difference going to an M.2 drive. In, in fact, for some reason, in our tests our M.2 drive actually slowed things down a little bit. And I can't fully explain that. It's within the margin of error, though. It was just within a couple of percents difference. So I wouldn't consider the M.2 drive to be slower than the SSD. But it's certainly, it's not substantially faster. Um, certainly, it wouldn't justify the cost of upgrading. If you're a photographer looking to improve Lightroom performance, stick with the SSD. Don't bother upgrading to an M.2 drive. Calling Lightroom showed similar results. Calling is the process of after you've imported your pictures, after you've rendered those one-to-one -one previews, of going through and selecting them. It can be really slow to just go through picture by picture by picture. I used 50 megapixel 5DSR pictures for this just as the most extreme example. And again, the M2 drive really didn't, it didn't improve the performance. In fact, for some reason, it was a tiny, tiny bit slower, but it's close enough just to call it even. The magnetic drive was a little bit slower. Um, why are the drives so much faster and we're not seeing that performance benefit at the application level? The, the reason is that there are multiple different benchmarks, uh, multiple different bottlenecks in any computer. In the case of both Lightroom and Premiere, the biggest bottleneck is the computer's CPU, the processor. And this has basically a top spec desktop CPU in it and it's overclocked and it's water cooled. So if anything, that would exaggerate the performance benefits of putting in faster disk IO, the fact that the processor is as little of a bottleneck as it possibly can be, but still you, you see that we didn't see a huge difference and I can't go around telling people to spend the extra money on the, the M.2 drives. Um, in the case of Premiere Pro, a lot of that processing is offloaded to the GPU, less than you might think, but some portion of it is offloaded to the GPU. And this has a GTX 1080 in it, and we didn't, you know, so it's it's already pretty fast. <laughs> but again, changing the hard drive didn't do a huge difference in the performance. So 
talking about magnetic hard drives. These are the types of hard drives that have been around forever. Right now, they go for about $50 a terabyte. You can pick up one at this URL, sdp.io slash hdd, and we get a few pennies out of it every dollar. I appreciate your support for that. Um, I have a lot of these eight terabyte archive drives because we have to archive stuff and we have 4K videos and tons and tons of raw photos. Those go for about $235 for an eight terabyte drive, which is a remarkable, remarkable price. That's incredibly cheap. You can pick that specific one up here. So in our workflow, we still use these big magnetic drives for just storing massive amounts of files in a RAID configuration so that they're they're kind of uh, continuously protected from hard drive failure and data corruption. So we still need conventional hard drives, even though I'm showing that the performance isn't very good. Um, on my desktop computer, my main working drive is an SSD. On Justin's, his main working drive is an M2 drive, just because his computer is a little, a little, a little newer. Um, I'd plan to get an M2 drive if these uh, comparisons turned out a little bit better, if the M2 drive showed more of a performance increase, and now it's not looking like it's going to be worth the expense. So. SSDs are still where the sweet spot is, I think, for your system drive and for your editing drive, for your Lightroom catalog drive. They go for about 250 bucks a terabyte, and you can pick up an SSD for S at, at sdp.io slash SSD. I have to warn you, if, if you have an older computer and you wedge in an SSD, what you might find is you don't get the full performance from the SSD. You'll definitely benefit from the what we call the lower latency, the time it takes for the computer to find a particular part of a file. That's always going to be faster than a hard drive. However, older computers might have older drive interfaces that can't keep up with the high throughput of these drives. So you might put it in there and then see that the performance benefit is even less than we already showed. It's probably always going to be faster than a magnetic drive but the differences are gonna be really slight, so you might not actually see much pop. The M2 drives are the newest drive formats. Um, you'll notice that the interface here is not a standard disk drive format. It's not the same connector that you see on your SSDs or your magnetic hard drives. That means that you need a special connector for it. So there are two ways you can get M2 drives into your computers. You might have a new computer like this that has an M2 slot in it. This one actually has two M2 slots in it, so we have them rated. And then you can just put it right in there, no problem. If you don't, you can get a PCI adapter that goes into your computer and allows you to connect one or two M2 drives there. If you do that, beware though, because all this fast M2 data is being channeled through your PCI bus. And that means that your PCI bus has the potential to become a bottleneck. Again, if you have an older computer, you're not gonna see a huge performance benefit because the drive isn't gonna be able to unleash its full performance because it's gonna be going through this tiny little PCI channel. The prices on M2 drives are staggering <laughs> compared to what they are for the other types of drives. 500 bucks a terabyte. That would get you 16 terabytes of storage from a magnetic con a conventional magnetic drive. Um, or if you get the two terabyte one that I actually want, it costs over $1,500. You can pick it up at, at this link here. So as I've been saying, there can be multiple different bottlenecks. I We tested this one specific computer, and because everything in it is brand new and top spec, it's actually going to exaggerate the differences. We didn't find big differences, but if you have an older computer, the differences you see might actually be less. i also say the magnetic drive we tested was 7200 RPM, a 7200 RPM desktop drive. If you have a mobile computer, you might have a much slower drive, like a 5400 RPM magnetic drive, in which case upgrading to an SSD will give you a bigger performance benefit, but it still doesn't mean that M2 is right for you. Um, and I'll also say not all drives of these classes are equal, besides the difference between 5400 RPM and 7200 RPM drives. Uh, different SSD drives can vary in performance some, and different M2 drives can vary in performance some. We use these specific uh, examples to kind of generalize. Um, but I'll also say the differences between M2 drives are pretty slight, especially compared to the differences between a magnetic drive and an M2 drive or an SSD and an M2 drive. If you want more detailed information about building out computers for video editing or or photos, photo editing, go visit sdp.io slash desktops if you're building a desktop rig or stp.io slash laptop if you're looking to buy a laptop for these purposes. And do me a favor, just subscribe to our channel. Lots of techie good stuff. Uh, we tune the heck out of our computers and we'll try to help you do so too. Thanks, bye.